Zabbix is an enterprise class open source monitoring solution. Designed to be an all-in-one application, Zabbix can track performance and availability of network servers, devices, services, and other IT resources. Zabbix empowers administrators to quickly respond to incidents with on-screen display capabilities and alerts by email, SMS, Jabber, and more. Users can also collect, store, manage, and analyze information received from IT infrastructure. Actively used by small to medium businesses, as well as large enterprises across all industries and in almost every country, Zabbix has a robust community driving its continued development. Today, we're gonna to deploy Zabbix through the marketplace, and then we'll configure a client on another compute instance and connect them together. Finally, we'll set up our own reporting to ensure critical data points are tracked and that we get alerted when something goes wrong. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you can follow along with this guide using the link below. The link will get you $100 in free credit so you can try this out for yourself. Okay, let's get into this. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to create and we're gonna go down to marketplace. Then we're gonna search for Zabbix here. Well, there it is, let's select it and let's scroll down. Now what we're gonna do is create a limited pseudo user. Uh, I'm just gonna use Zabbix and I'll just fill in my email address here. Then we're gonna create a Linode API token. So let's click up here on our username and then we're going to select API tokens. We're gonna create a new token. We don't wanna give this token any more privileges than it needs. So let's actually select no access for select all. And then we're gonna just check the domain box. Then let's provide a name here. We'll just type in Zabbix. And then we're gonna hit create token. Now let's copy this personal access token to our clipboard and back in the other tab, we're gonna paste that API token into this field. Then for our subdomain, I'm gonna put in Zabbix. You can set this to whatever you'd like. Uh, and then for domain, I'm going to put in heavyelement.me, which is a domain that I have access to. You'll want to use something that you actually own. Uh, and in order for this to work, Linode is going to have to be set as the name server for your uh, domain name that you're using. If it's not, there are manual ways to configure this stuff. You don't have to put in anything under the advanced options here. However, that's outside the scope of this video because your name server and DNS configuration is going to be wildly different than others. Now we're gonna set a friendly name for our Zabbix server. We're just gonna call it Zabbix. And then we're gonna select uh, Newark, New Jersey, just because that's closest to me geographically. I'm in the Northeast United States, uh, so Newark makes sense. Uh, let's scroll down here and we're gonna select a two gigabyte shared CPU plan. And then you can give your Linode any name you want. I'm just gonna call mine Zabbix here provide a strong root password. This is what you're gonna to use to initially log in to your machine. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit create Linode down here. Now this process is going to take a few minutes. So while you're waiting, you should take this opportunity to hit that like button and maybe subscribe to the Akamai Developer channel. It really helps us out here. And if you're enjoying videos like this, uh, you should definitely get subscribed so you don't miss the next one. All right, while that's provisioning, we're gonna create another uh, Linode, we're gonna set up WordPress. You can set up literally any uh, instance you want. You don't even have to set up a new one if you have an existing uh, Linode or other infrastructure you wanna monitor. I'm just gonna skip ahead to having the WordPress instance done. All right, so now our WordPress site is provisioning and uh, it looks like the Zabbix server is running. So we're gonna launch the Lish console here. Now we can watch the Marketplace app being configured here. And this is going to take several minutes to finish. Uh, it's waiting for DNS uh, registration to update. Um, so we'll skip ahead to when that's actually done. All right, you should now see installation complete. And when you see this screen asking for a login, uh, you, you'll know that the Zabbix server has been configured. We'll go ahead and log in with the root uh, username and the root password we set up earlier. So we'll go ahead and do that. And as you're typing in the password, you're not gonna see anything appear as you type. That's perfectly normal. Now you can see we're prompted with a, a greeting. It says Akamai Connected Cloud, Zabbix Marketplace app. And we have our app URL, which is the domain that we specified. If you didn't specify a domain name, this is where you'll actually find how to access your uh, application. And then we have a credentials file. So we're just gonna type in cat slash home slash dollar sign username slash dot credentials. And that didn't work. Um, why didn't that work? 
All right, uh, we logged in as root, so we don't we we don't need to use the username here. You can use whatever username you set up uh, as the pseudo user. So now we have uh, the credentials that we need to access the Zabbix front end. So let's go ahead and copy the Zabbix admin GUI password here, and we're going to go to um, Zabbix.heavyelement.me, which you know you're, you're going to use your own domain. And we're gonna put in admin with a capital A and we'll paste our password. And there we go, we're logged into our Zabbix server. Now we're gonna turn our attention to setting up our other server uh, to uh, that it reports to Zabbix. Let's log in via SSH because that'll make things a little bit easier. If you're on Windows, you can open up PowerShell. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can use uh, Terminal. You're gonna type in SSH space root at and then the domain or the IP address that you use to log into the dashboard. And then we're gonna run this command. This is going to synchronize any updates that we might have, uh, and it's going to let us um, run some more commands down. Now let's run this command. Um, this is gonna be down in the description. The command will download the Zabbix client. If you're watching this more than like three to six months after the video went live, then you should double check that the Zabbix server that you're running and the client that you're downloading with this command are the same version. If they're not, then you're gonna run into some issues. If not, it's just not gonna work at all. Now let's install this package that we just downloaded with the previous command. Uh, dpackage-i will install the package that we just downloaded. Now we're gonna run sudo apt update-y, and then this is going to update our package cache. Then we're gonna run uh, sudo apt install zabbix-agent. Hit enter, boom, look at that. All right, let's do sudo systemctl restart Zabbix agent. And let's do sudo systemctl uh, enable Zabbix dash agent. Now we need to generate an encryption key so that the server and the client can talk securely with each other. So we're gonna do sh uh, dash c, and then in uh, quotes, we're gonna say open SSL rand dash hex 3.2 slash, I'm sorry, uh, right angle bracket. And then we're going to uh, write that result into slash etc slash Zabbix slash Zabbix.psk. And we make sure we close the uh, quote. Hit enter. And now if we cat slash etc slash Zabbix slash Zabbix.psk, uh, it will show us what was just generated for our public key, our pre-shared key, I should say. There we go, that's our encryption key, and we're gonna come back to this in a moment. So now we've got the Zabbix client set up, but it needs to actually be configured in order to point it to the Zabbix server that we set up uh, in the previous step. So let's type in nano slash etc slash Zabbix slash Zabbix underscore agent D dot conf. Then in here, we actually need to find a few values we need to modify. So you can hit Control W and type in um, server, which is the first uh, value we need to update. And this is going to be the IP address of our Zabbix server. So let's go ahead and copy that. And then um, we're gonna paste that in here. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can right click, or if you're on Mac or Linux, you can hit Control Shift uh, V and paste it in there. Then we're gonna look for server active and we're gonna paste in the IP address again. Then we're going to set the host name. This is the host name of the Zabbix server that we're using. This should be Zabbix, depending on the friendly name field that you set earlier uh, during the Zabbix server setup. So now we want TLS connect and we're gonna retype this here and say uh, PSK, that's what we want. Come down here, we have TLS accept and we're going to type that in again, and then we're gonna say PSK again. Let's scroll down a little bit more and find TLS PSK identity, and we're going to type in um, PSK001. This should be unique between every uh, client that you have connected. Then uh, we're gonna go down one field and we're gonna say uh, TLS PSK file equals, and then we're gonna point it to the et cetera uh, Zabbix, Zabbix.psk file that we created. Then we should be done. Um, that should be everything we need to do here. So we're gonna hit Control X and then we're gonna hit Y on our keyboard to save. 
Uh, if you've made a mistake, you can hit N for don't save or uh, control C to cancel. So now we're gonna type in systemctl restart Zabbix dash agent. So now that we have our uh, WordPress server set up, we need to tell our Zabbix server how to actually communicate with the Zabbix agent on the WordPress server. Lots of jargon here, I apologize. So we're still logged in. So let's go over here to configuration and click on hosts. And then we're gonna go up here and hit create host. So now let's type in our host name and that's gonna be WordPress in this case. Um, you can tell what our uh, host name is by the prompt here. It says root at WordPress and that's going to be our host name. So we can go ahead and continue with that. Let's say WordPress. For templates, we're gonna type in Linux and then we should see uh, Linux by Zabbix agent. That's the one we wanna use. Uh, then we're going to type in a group. This can be anything. Uh, we're just gonna say remote. Let's go ahead and click add and hit agent. And you can either use the IP address or the domain name here. Uh, if you use the domain name, you need to update this button. So we'll put in our IP address and then let's go over to the encryption tab. And this is where we're gonna use the uh, output from the command we ran earlier, cat slash etc slash Zavix slash Zavix dot PSK. <laughs> So we're gonna check this box here and uncheck no encryption. And then for PSK identity, we wanna use PSK001. That's the name that we specified in the configuration file on the client. So we're gonna type that in here, PSK001. Uh, PSK and then the PSK field is going to contain the contents of the Zabbix.psk file that we created when we're generating our encryption key. All right, let's go ahead and click okay. And now let's wait for the servers to establish communication with each other. And this is gonna take a few minutes, um, but once it's done, you should see a, a green activity light here. Oh, and it's red, okay. Uh, get value from agent failed, cannot connect to whatever uh, interrupted system call. All right. So it looks like there's an error. So I'm gonna run this command here uh, to see if uh, the server is making a connection with the agent. And it's gonna hang here while we while it waits for con incoming connections. We're gonna restart this process and see if we're actually getting a, a message back here. Oh, and I forgot to set connection to host to PSK. Well, that might be the issue right there. All right, so it's gonna start trying, and there it is, it's connecting. So we're getting packets, all right. Um, all right, so the problem was that the port was closed on the client. So on our WordPress server, we're gonna type the command UFW allow 10050. And that's going to open up the port in the firewall to allow Zabbix to communicate to this device. And there we go, literally, wow, it was that easy uh, to fix it. So we just ran that command on the WordPress server and that was an easy fix, huh? All right, now, we have everything working here. So now we can see the available system memory. We can see the CPU soft IQ time. Uh, we can see free swap space. We can see average load time here. Uh, number of running processes. Cool, system uptime. Yeah, great. So now we have all these insights into our machine. So it's pretty cool. The, the Linux Zabbix agent has a bunch of preset metrics that it pulls in by default, but we can actually set up our own. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna go over here to configuration and we're gonna click on hosts and we're gonna click on items. And then we're going to go ahead and click on create item up here. Now we're gonna put in HTTP connectivity and for uh, type, we're gonna leave it at Zabbix agent. For key, we're going to type in net.tcp.service and we're gonna do an open square bracket, HTTP comma, and then an IP address comma 80 close square bracket. But for IP address, we actually have to set this to the IP address of our Zabbix client. So what this is gonna do is it's going to make a TCP request from the client to the IP address we specify. And uh, once we get results back, uh, it's going to tell us whether or not uh, it worked. So a successful request is going to return as one and a failed request will be zero. And we can set this to update interval. We can modify this to whatever we want. I'm just gonna have it check every minute to make sure that it's uh, able to access port 80 on its local machine. And we're just gonna put in a description here, monitor HTTP connectivity. So now we have our new metric that we're tracking. And uh, if we go over here to monitoring and we click on latest data, we can 
type in here HTTP and there we go. We have the HTTP connectivity. If we actually click on the name here like this and we go to open, uh, you can see that we have one data point. It's pretty neat. So let's go over here to configuration and go to host and we're going to click on triggers and we're going to set up a trigger here. So uh, if the uh, HTTP connectivity drops to zero, then we want to make sure we get an alert for that. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's go ahead and click on create trigger. And then here we're going to say HTTP down. Um, event name and operational data can be left unchanged. Let's let's click on high severity. And then we're gonna click add next to the expression box here. And uh, for this, we're gonna set uh, to HTTP connectivity, um, which is the data point we just created. Let's click on that right there. And then for function, let's just leave it at last. Uh, for last of T, we can leave that blank. And let's just set result to equal to zero. And then let's go ahead and click insert and then hit add and then we're set up. That was very easy to set up. And that's not all, right? Like this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can do all kinds of stuff with Zabbix. You can track other pieces of uh, infrastructure in your network. Um, it doesn't even have to be in your network. It can be remote. Um, and you can also set your up monitoring. Like you can get emails or SMS or you can get messages through Slack, Discord, Microsoft Teams. The sky's the limit, really. If you want to find out how to do any of that stuff, there's going to be a link to some additional documentation in the description below. Don't forget to use the link below to get signed up and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss our next video. That'll do it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.